In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Y. Welcome to SMY. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to try and complete our series on, um, on the liturgy of Chantel today. Just to give you guys an idea of what is on the altar uh, and what gets put on the altar and what's around the altar inside, inside the, behind, behind the icon stasis. So we'll, um, we'll try and explain each one as we go and we'll, um, hopefully it won't take too long. So the first thing that, that we can explain is probably one of the biggest things that we see from the back of the church. Um, but before I continue, before I continue on, the, everything that the, the priest uses is consecrated by the bishop or by the Pope himself. So that it becomes holy and fit and, and fit to, um, to be used in the church. So the first thing we're going to explain is this cross here. So this cross is the, is the processional cross and it's used for, um, it's used for a procession um, baptisms, weddings, uh, when the Pope or the Bishop comes um, during the, f the festal liturgies, we use the, the big cross to um, to bring the um, the oblation in, so the orban that's going to become the body the body of Christ, the body uh, the body of Christ. Um, we use that cross to bring in the um, the the two couples um, coming to get married, and we use this cross also to go around the church. To proceed, like to, to do a procession for the newly baptized um, people. On one side, if you I don't know if you guys can see it, but on one side there's a resurrection icon, a small resurrection icon, and another and another um, and on the other side is an icon of crucifixion. That's going to be a bit hard to take out, but um, if you can trust me, we can show you when we come back to church. Um, we also have um, smaller on, like icons, so. Crosses like this on a smaller scale, so maybe the same size as this. It's used for the resurrection, um, the feast of the resurrection, apocalypses, and things like that. It's used to also do processions. So um, we have those those crosses as well. Um, we also have. Um, I'm not going in chronological order or order of anything, but we also have the place where Abuna washes his hands before the liturgy. Or before a priest is going to give communion, um, there is the basin which is located on that side. Um, Abuna will wash his hands three times and say three psalms, um, and that's it's got the two the two the, the jug of water and the and the basin and just a place to hold it. Also, utensil or ornament that we use in the church. It's actually a, it's a candle stand. So this um, can represent. So according to one of the Coptic encyclopedias. This can represent two things. It could, and it, one is placed on the north side and on the south side of the altar. Um, it can represent um, the two angels standing at the in the tomb of Christ, um, one at the head, one at the feet, and it can also represent the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, it was so these candle stands were originally um, said uh, was originally. Commanded by God to Moses that he should put two candle stands in the, in the tabernacle, in the furnishings of the tabernacle, and that's and it's something we say in the Tazbaha that there was a, the candle stands in the tabernacle. We also have we explained in the vestments in the rites of the vestments and uh, in the rites of vespers and matins, we have um, this we have the cross with the three candles on it, and we said before that the priest never used to use something like this. He never used he's only only used to use one um, either uh, just a cross on its own but then it got developed and it, he used to use one candle maybe um, if there was a bishop present they used to use three candles they used to and, and then the cross so we have now something like this that's already pre-made for us um, it's got the three candles when he prays oh god have mercy upon us the next um, the next altar utensil is we have is the, the famous sensor this is used in uh, most of the liturgical services, um, I can't remember which one that we don't use it in, but um, so during the Basra we probably won't use this on the Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, but on Thursday and Friday we'll use it. So the, the sensor is made of, so the, there's four, or the, there's the three um, chains coming on, on each side and the one in the middle, and it's made of, um, sometimes some of them made of gold, silver, bronze, things like that. And there's bells on the uh, on, on attached to the um, to the hook to the to the chains with a hook on here, so Abuna can kind of take it. Um, as I mentioned before, 
I think the Coptic Orthodox Church is the only church that use that that does kind of this that kind of folds the um, the the chains together in order to get kind of um, in order to get that movement going. Um, in the Old Testament, the censer um, was filled with five coals in the, in Numbers 16. Um, in Exodus, God commanded Moses to make an altar on which exclusive incense was burnt by Aaron every morning, and the perfume of incense, as we said in Vespers and Matins, represents the presence of God and also represents um, the prayers that we um, that we are, that we that we pray towards towards God or towards or like we ask. For, um, for intercessions uh, to Abuna, and Abuna takes it on the incense, and the incense um, delivers that to God. In the Christian worship, the same idea in the in the, in the liturgies is that the censer or the incense that we put is used as prayers um, set before God, and it also represents um, the censer represents Saint Mary, where it, it carries the live coal. Okay, so Saint Mary had Christ in her in her womb. Um, this is the same that with the ember. Um, in the in the in the sensor or, or the the coal in the, in the sensor represents the, the Christ and the um and the and, and the and the golden bowl here uh, represents Saint Mary. Um, we also we use the incense uh, when, when we start using the 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 sensor we use it when when a, a hymn called Taishori or this is the sensor of pure gold containing the amber was entrusted by the hand to the hands of Aaron, the priest raising incense on the altar. So um, it's, a, it's a sign for Abuna to use the censer. We also have the cross. This cross is an ornament um, that the bishop and the priest use at times of prayer. He makes the sign that he makes the sign of the cross with it on the oblations or to bless someone's tonya or to bless the people. So when he says the Lord be with you all, he turns to the people and blesses them. Um, uh, he also, on the baptismal water, so the water for baptism, he blesses the water with the cross. He also blesses the, the betrothed couple, the engaged couple, when, they, when they're wanting to get married, he blesses them with a cross. So the, the cross, um, a, when a priest is ordained, um, the, the pope or the bishop who's ordained him has, gives him a cross like this as a sign of uh, authority and power. And he also gives him a pe pectoral cross, cross. And this pectoral cross is um is known as the cross of the priest that he has to carry it's not necessarily a bad thing but it's um uh, that some people take it a bit negative and say that's the, the cross of the priest but this is a cross that the priest has to carry throughout his life just like just as anyone else has to carry a cross in his life um there's other sources that say the priest doesn't have to use a cross in the liturgy um that his hands have been sanctified by the body and blood of christ so he can just use his hands to kind of bless the people. But there are two schools of thoughts that we can use here. We have two, two ornaments here that we use, um, two vessels here that we use. Um, it's the cruets for the wine and the water when they're being um, offered to, um, uh, to the, to the, in, in the offertory. So one like this, it doesn't matter which one, but one of them could be um, the wine and the water. And this is the ones where Abuna smells and gets the other deacons to smell as well. Um, and, it, and then the water, Abuna only uses a little bit of it and the rest gets put in the, in the jugs in the back there. Um, so that's two um, cruets that we, that we use. <clears throat> now this one, this one was a bit interesting when I found out that we, and we actually have these in the church. So as part of the altar utensils, we actually have an have a, have a utensil that fans the flies and the, the insects away from the, the body and blood of Christ out of the um, body and blood of Christ. Um, we actually don't have fans, so those were actually used in the, in the very early church. And what would happen is that if so if a priest is praying the liturgy and there was a fly or an insect that that came on the oblations, the deacon would use the fan to kind of swat away the flies. We don't have, and uh, we don't have, we don't actually have um, a, uh, an altar utensil like that. But what they did, and and on that on that on that utensil has the um, the uh, an icon of the cherubim and the seraphim. So now what the church did is to kind of decorate the whole altar and like decorate this area. They use something like this, and they, if you can see it clearly, they've actually put the 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 cherubim and the seraphim on it. So if you can see clearly here. 
they've actually put the cherubim and the seraphim on it. And it, and this is the fan. It, it never used to be made of gold because it, it might have been hard to kind of like swat away the flies with it because it was heavy. And this one's pretty heavy as well. But what they've used now is that they've used kind of gold. But back in the day, it used to be made of like, um, it used to be made of uh, peacock feathers, linen cloth, thin sheets, fright or fine threads of metal. But this kind of looks like, I don't know, if it looks like a peacock's feather or, um, I don't know, it could be used, this one probably won't be used to swat away the flies. But now deacons use a lefefa to kind of just, just do this in front of the altar. Um, but this was a, a real altar utensil that they used to use made of um, different material to swat away the flies. And it has the, cher the cherubim and seraphim um, hovering as if they, their wings are hovering over the, over the body and blood of Christ. So it's nice, it's interesting to find that the early church used to use something like that um, back in the day. We also have <coughs> we also have the gospel. Um, the gospel here uh, is used on a regular basis when we come to pray the, the, the gospel. Enclosed, if I can open it, I can open it. Enclosed in the gospel is the the four gospels of like this so the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or it can contain the whole New Testament. Um, and it's placed on the altar on the sides. So if I can show you like this, this is what it looks like. It's just got the Old Testament, it's in Arabic. It's got the Old Testament, New Testament. It can be in English, could be in Coptic, could be in Greek, doesn't matter. It's made of silver or gold. On the one side, it has, it, it could have St. Mary uh, um, holding Christ as a child. And it could have the saint of the church. It could have, we have this one here, has the icon of the resurrection and the crucifixion, if you can see clearly. It's a bit light, but that's the crucifixion and that's the resurrection there. Okay. The incense box is placed on the right side of the altar. It is. It just contains incense inside with a spoon, um, and it's used to fill up fill up the censer with incense. Let's get to the um, to, to the liturgical part of this, um, where the priest furnishes the. Um, the altar. So now we get to the part where um, where we furnish the altar to prepare for the liturgy. So I just want to um, read read to you uh, the words that Abun, that the priest actually says while he's before he starts and after he prepares the the altar. Just so you can just so you can understand that the priest is not actually worthy to pray liturgy as well, um, but he does it because you know he um, he does it out of out of like out of God's like. God's God's mercy allows us to kind of pray. So before he stands, he stands exactly here, as and nothing has been opened yet. And he says, "O Lord, who knows the hearts of all, who rests, who is holy, who rests in His saints, who alone is without sin, and has power to forgive sins. You, O Lord, know my unworthiness and unpreparedness, and my lack of meekness for this Your holy service." It's beautiful words. It's to show that even the priest is not worthy to um to begin to begin this service. And I do not have the countenance to draw near and open my mouth before your holy glory, but according to the multitude of eternal mercies, pardon me a sinner. So the priest is acknowledging that even he is a sinner among 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 the people, having trying to have communion. And grant to me that I might that I may find grace and mercy at this hour. And send down to me strength from on high that I may begin and make ready and accomplish your service after your pleasure, according to the ascent of your will for the sweet savour of incense. Yea, O our master, be with us. Be a partner with us and working with us and bless us. So we're even asking God to come and help and, and work with us in this sacrament. Because the when when the, when the when the Eucharist is being administered, it's not or being blessed, it's not the, it's not a buna that blesses the Eucharist. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit. It's like it's the it's the it's God who who um, who makes who, who changes the body and blood. For you are for the forgiveness of our sins, light of our souls, our life, our strength, and our bodies. So he finishes here, and you'll and then you'll find that the, the deacons will know this because they're the ones that do this. You'll find that this altar bag, okay, it contains everything in there that we need to use for the liturgy, um, is tied up here into knots. So this is three knots. If you can, it might not be clear, but this is three knots, and then underneath is two knots. And I'll explain and I'll explain why, um, like I'll explain to you why they are they are um, uh, knotted this way. So when Abuna comes to open up this this vessels bag, he says, "In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, Amen. And he does the first blessing. Blessed be God, the Father, the Pontiff Protol. And he opens one. And he says, Blessed be um, blessed be his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and opens the next. <clears throat> if I can get it open. Okay. It says, Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, and opens it, and that's one, one not untied. And he says, Glory and honor, and he opens. Honor and glory, and opens the next one, given to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we are in front of the altar here, and we've un, we've we've un, untied the five blessings that we um, are all accustomed to now. Um, we've explained even in the even when a Buna comes to give incense, he has to bless it five times. This is in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Blessed be God the Father, and he puts one. Blessed be his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed, and, he, and continue. That's that's the five. Okay. So we open up the altar now. And we open up the altar bag, okay? So we have the throne in front of us, and we've opened up the altar bag, okay? So the throne here is pretty much something to carry um, to carry the chalice. And this is only used to carry the chalice, okay? As you see, we have some icons on the side. Normally, we'd only have the icon of Christ or the Lord's, or the, the Lord's Supper in the front. If there was only four sides, then we'd have the, the Lord's Supper or, or, Christ in, or just Christ on the front here. We've had Saint Mary, and then maybe an archangel on the on the back, and then the saint of the church on the side. But here we have a, f a few spaces for icons, so they've just placed icons on there. Okay. So a bona will begin. Um, uh, this will begin to put the the altar utensils, and we'll start with the chalice here. Start with the chalice. So the chalice here is used to administer the blood of Christ. Um, it's it's made of gold, um, or so it can make it can be gold, silver. As we know, <clears throat> so there's two sides to it. There's the 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 hollow the hollow side where we drink from, and there's also the stand, which some priests, if they're not very careful, can insert it this way, and it just it won't it won't work out because if there's a hole underneath or anything like that. Um, so the priest, you know, our priest would know that this is the base, and then this is the the, the place where we drink from. Okay, so uh, one in the uh, in the beginning of the liturgy, we'll fill this up with wine, and then we'll fill up a third or half of the 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 croat with water, and it'll just stay in there for the rest of the liturgy, and it'll be blessed into the body into the blood of Christ. Okay. In the early church, we know that we that the the, the believers used to um, used to uh, just drink out of the chalice, and then pass it to the next, and then give it back to the priest. And the priest will pass it on to the next person, and they'll drink. This is the way the priests um, drink the, the, the uh, consume the blood. Um, they um, they pass it to all the other priests, and they and they consume the blood from there. So we'll put the this this one opens up. Some of them don't open up. Sometimes some of them you have to just put it in the thing. But this is just easy for us. Okay. <clears throat> so the chalice. In, is inserted in inside the the throne and it's left there till till communion time. Okay. We have also these um, veils that we use to furnish the altar. Okay. Looks something like this. It can be different shapes and sizes and colors and it's not really um, it's not really necessary. Mean, it's necessary, but it's not it, like there's no special you know. Uh, pattern colors that we need to um, to use. So we can show you these are all the the the, linens, the veils. We also have this and Shani um, last week um, explained what the prosperin is. It's the the altar cover um, that when the abuna covers the altar, and we can explain we can we can come back to this point later on. But this is put in the back. We'll explain why later. Just like that, the priest begins to um, furnish the altar. So he puts, he does three, three um, diamonds, three diamonds with the with the with the veils like this. So he puts one on on the left, one on the right, and then one on the left. Okay, and one in the middle. So in a, in a, in a shape of diamonds like this. Okay. And he puts one in the middle. 
And if you look at the altar from this side, you'll find three triangles. Okay. And then uh, the priest will get a square now instead of the diamond, make a square, and he'll put it like this, like so. Okay. And he'll put one on the left, one on the right, one in the middle. Okay. Um, so we put one on the left, one on the right, one in the middle. <clears throat> okay. It's very simple furnishings, but if we and then if we like if we try and get an idea of why we actually furnish the altar before we start, it's as if we're receiving like we're receiving you know we're receiving Christ we're receiving Christ have and you know in our lives and we're receiving Christ in the church. So it's important for us to you know decorate as Moses said in the in the um, uh, in the Teotokaya on Sunday he said you decorate our souls, souls O Moses the prophet. So when we when we come to decorate, you know, the church, when we when we're inviting someone to our house, we set up the plate, we set up, you know, um, certain things on the on the dinner table in order for us to eat together. So it's it's the same idea. We're trying to make it look nice um, and um, nice and clean and neat and tidy as well. Okay. So we need to make sure that all of these are clean and thank God that they are. Okay. We have. So we have, so we use six here. It's not really doesn't resemble anything. Um, numbers not don't really resemble anything here. But we use six. If we take out what's in this bag here, okay. <coughs> we have a couple of things here. We have the pattern, which is um, like a a gold plate that we put the, 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 the offering on there and it becomes the body the body of, of Christ at the end. So we also have uh, this uh, they call it an asterisk in the Coptic encyclopedia. Um, some people say that it represents the manger and that this is the star that was um, that was hovering on top of the manger. It could be that um, but you know um, that's it could be that it could be something else but this is called an asterisk. It is um, two semicircles that are uh, that are you know joined at the right angles in the middle, and it's just placed on top of the pattern here. Okay. It could be to protect. Um, it could be to protect the the oblations. Um, there was a funny story that one of the monks in the monastery told me where uh, Abuna was bending. He he's, he had no eyesight. To, like he had, he couldn't see the oblations, and he was bending down. In front of the altar, and some kid took the took the the body or the orban and just ran with it, and he you know he he didn't didn't see that again. Okay, we also have so before we put the pattern on, we also have this red lefer. Okay, it's just a normal um, corporal no, normal veil, but it's colored in red. This is a practical um, uh, this is a practical thing. Okay, it's a, pra a practical reason why we use it, and we place it right under the pattern. Okay. And we put the pattern on top of it like this, okay? And you can see that there's red and everything else is white. If a buna is breaking the breaking the body, okay, during the fraction, and and a, and a piece falls on the white corporal here, he won't be able to see it. So what the monks in the monastery have have done is that they've placed a red corporal under, so that if part of the body falls on the sides or maybe underneath somehow, okay. A buna can easily pick it up and you can see it and put it back in. So it's just a practical reason just to show um, bits like parts of like the jewels that, that fall on top, that fall outside of the, the pattern. Okay. We also have um, actually we also have this. This is the, the mystir or the spoon that is used to administer the, the, the blood. Okay. This was this would never used to exist, okay, because as we mentioned before, that we used to drink out of the, the chalice itself. So this um, was used to. The, so this was now used to administer the, um, the 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 blood of Christ to the believers, and also the the priests when they come to con, when to, when they come to consume the body, if the, if there are other priests present as well, um, the the priest puts a part of the of the body on the spoon, and simply the priest will take the spoon and just consume it like that. Okay. And then to the rest of the believers, 
um, Abuna takes a bit of the body and, and, and gives it to them. While the bishop is consecrating the mystere or the spoon, he says, O God, who made his servant Isaiah the prophet worthy to look at the seraphim holding the tongs with the uh, holding the tongs with which he took the live coal from off the altar and laid it upon his mouth. Do now, O God Almighty, spread your hand on this spoon with the sac with the sacred blood and precious with the sacred body and the flesh precious blood will be administered. So this um, is a representation of Isaiah in the Old Testament when the angel or the the the, the, the seraphim. Uh, fed him the the live coal and it didn't burn his mouth. Okay, so we use them still. Okay. We also have this corporal. It's got a hole in the middle and four crosses on the side. This is to cover the throne and and to cover whatever is around the um, around the uh, the chalice. Okay. We need a few other corporals to use, so we have this one as well. So we put on top. We we can some priests. Oh, we we put this one on top of the chalice. To cover the chalice so that no flies come in. Okay. We use a half triangle. We flip one inside out and one normal. So we took, take the one normal one and we put it on the side. And we put it on the front towards the priest. We take one more, flip it on its flip it on the inside. Okay. And we use that to cover the back side of it. Why why do we use that? When a woman finishes washing his hands and comes out and the offer the, the, the Urban is being presented to him. The first thing that he takes is this, this one. So this is the, the triangle one, okay? And he puts it underneath his, inside his, um, in, in his sleeve. And he chooses, when he chooses the Urban, okay, for the one that's going to be the sacrifice, he then takes it out, it's like magic, he takes it out, and he starts to wipe the bread with, just to get rid of the excess um, flour, okay? And then he puts it on, on here, and he puts the body on it and wraps it up, okay? So that's not, that's the first one, and then during the um, th during the Thanksgiving prayer towards the end, uh, Abuna is going to now cover the oblation. So all he has to do here is take half and cover it with half, and he's done. Okay. Uh, the rest of so the rest the, there's a lot of excess ones that we don't really use. Sometimes we can put five, so we can put one, two, three, four, five. We can put five triangles. Depends. We just have excess ones here, so we don't we, we don't need to use them. Although we do take one. And we put it outside for the communion, uh, for the communion table, and we do this. Okay. Now, now during the liturgy, what, what happens is towards the end of the um, Thanksgiving prayer, Abuna covers. So this was uncovered, so we can put the the wine and the water in there. Okay. So he uncovers it, and then he uncovers. So and he sorry he covers it, and then he covers this as well. Okay. So now these are both covered, and then he brings in the the prostrium. The prostrium is pretty much a massive um, cloth okay that's used to um, cover the whole oblation okay so he uses to cover the body and the blood and so if we try and cover it like this okay, like that it's now covered and abuna covers it covers the oblations like this okay one of the reasons why they've covered the oblations is because the non the, the, the catechumens or the non-believers who are in the church they didn't, the church didn't want them to see the mysteries that was happening in, in that time. Okay, So they've covered the oblations completely. The other reason why is that so, so Abuna knows that it's protected. Abuna knows that the, the, the bread and wine which, he, which we offered is now protected. And Abuna can go, he can use the incense, the, the censer, and go around the, the censer and he's, he's, not, um, like he's not at the altar. Okay? Um, so it's it's a kind of like a protection thing, like a protection measure. Um, some people, if we want to go to the spiritual side, some people say it rep represents the tomb of Christ, and then and then they use another lefefer. The priest uses another lefefer to put a, to put a seal, representing the seal of the resurrection, the seal of the tomb on the tomb. Okay. Um, and then after the reconciliation prayer, Abuna will will. Will lift this and the deacons will fold it. We'll lift this off. Okay. And uh, and then the deacons will fold it by themselves in the back. And then the priest will take the corporal or the, the lefefa. And don't forget he has an extra one that he used for the for the seal. Okay. He'll take he'll take this corporal. 
okay? And he'll take the corporal on this, and we'll explain this next week as well. But he uses he uses the corp, the corporal to bless the people, okay? When he says the Lord be with you all, he's talking to the people. He says the Lord be with you all in your spirit. And then he does, Abuna does uh, this, uh, um, this strange thing that he swaps the corporals around. And sometimes, you know, the deacon serving the altar, they kind of question, question it and say, well, how come Abuna has to swap it? So what happens is that this was, it just shows the, the, the blessings of the corporal. So this corporal was on top of the, of the body, or on top of, on top of the body at all times. So Abuna takes this one, okay? And he takes the one that, that hasn't been used, and he, he puts that one on the, on the seal, uh, as a seal of the tomb. And he blesses this one that was on the body, and he blesses the people with it, to give them the blessing. When Abuna swaps at Agios, when he says Agios three times, before he says Agios three times, he swaps it. He sw takes this one, and, put, put it on, and puts it on his left hand. Left hand, okay. And he takes this one, he takes the one that was the seal of the resurrection or of, of the tomb and swaps it with the one on the chalice because this is the, this is the corporal that's been blessed, blessed with the chalice and he puts it here and put, places, places this one over it. And then he uses this corporal to bless in Agios when he says Agios the first time. The, the third time he blesses the people with the corporal that was on the block. So he's blessed, he's taken the blessings of the corporals and bless the people with it at the same time. So it's a very nice, uh, very nice spiritual um, blessing that we receive from the uh, from from the corporals, just from the corporals itself, in order for us to have to have communion at the end of the liturgy. Um, there are a couple of other things that I'll show you as well. We actually have um, two. So we actually have a lot a lot of other altar utensils around, but um, some of them we might actually not have. Some of them might have. But for the other sacraments that we use, uh, that we that we pray in the church, um, the sacrament of the of the of crown, the crowning ceremony or the um, the wedding, is that we crown the bride and the groom with with like physical with real crowns. Okay, so we put them on, put these on the head. The one with Saint Mary goes in the female, and the one with Christ goes in the male. Okay, and we say, crown them with honor, O Father, Amen. Bless them, O Only Begotten Son. Sanctify them, O Holy Spirit. And they are crowned. With the glory of Christ, so we use the crowns as the altar utensils, okay? As as sorry, not altar utensils, as utensils in general, okay? And during the baptism, we actually we use oil, and we actually use oil to bless the uh, the, the bride and the groom. We actually have this oil here as well. So we have the myron oil, and the myron oil is one of the famous oils that we use. Um, normally. The pope, the pope, and the bishops, of the, and the bishops are the ones who um, who make the oil, and they um, uh, and they. I, mean, I think a patriarch can do it can do it more than once, you know, as many times as he likes. But I think the average is that the the, pat the living patriarch but, um, uh, ends up doing it once once a, like once in, in the lifetime, once in his in his lifetime, okay, or once in his patriarchal seat. And this is um, a, a, this is a ritual in our church that I think takes up to four or five hours, and there's a liturgy prayed after. The myron is put on the Christian uh, on the Christian that has joined the church after baptism, um, and it's um, at the at the um, chrismation. Okay, used as a chrismation. We have the the oil of joy or the Galilean oil, and this is used on the on the child on the baptized child or the baptized person as well, and it, it's also used. Um, some people use it on the bride and groom when they when they get married as oil of joy, and it's prayed on as well. And it's it's used it's part of and it has part of the myron in it. And this, believe it or not, is actually um, normal oil, uh, olive oil. Okay, and it's um, it's used for general purposes. You know, when someone comes and say, "I want to please," you know, "I'm I'm sick," or "Please help me with this," uh, or um, I, "I need uh, I need blessings." We give them simple oil. We pray the five, um, the five blessings of uh, blessed be His only begotten, blessed be God, the God the Consolator, blessed be His only begotten Son Jesus Christ, blessed be the Holy Spirit, glory and honor, honor and glory. And we actually use this oil. It's as if we use, you know, when you get, when when a priest goes to someone's house and he blesses on the water, it's exactly the same thing, okay? But he's just blessing on oil, and we um, do it in their forehead. 
This is the same oil that we use in the Abu Ghalam Sis oil. So it's just a blessing oil. It's not part of, um, of an actual ritual in the church, like the Mairun or the, or the, the oil of Jum. So we actually have one little but important um, utensil that we use in the altar, in, in, the, in the liturgy. And this is the, the this is like the, the 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 communion pattern and chalice kind of thing that the priests use to take while they go and give um, communion in the hospital. Okay, so what it is is that it's still furnished as well, which is um, which is nice. It's furnished and it just looks something like this. Okay? It's a hollow um, you know container made from gold, silver, brass. Okay, <clears throat> let me look inside. And all Abuna does is he takes a little bit of the body, dips it in the blood, and puts it in there. Because we can't take a mystere as well. It's just a bit impractical. So Abuna takes a little bit of the blood, uh, a bit, bit of uh, part of the body, dips it in the blood, put it, puts it in there, and then closes on it, and then puts it in the in the in the in the in the, in the packet or in the in here. And then when he comes to when it comes to close it, he puts he does the five the three and the two as well. So when we come to close up the the, the cover, we do two. Okay, and then three. Because when Abuna comes to open it again, he says in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Blessed be God the Father Pontus of Lord, blessed be his only begotten Son Jesus Christ our Lord, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, Amen. Glory and honor are in those. So it's three, and then two when Abuna opens it. And then two and three when the deacon or abuna closes it up. Okay, so there we have it. We have the altar utensils or the main one that we use on a regular basis. If you have any questions, um, please post on the uh, comments below, or you can um, reach out to one of the servants or reach out to myself, and we'll happily answer it for you. Uh, God bless you guys and stay safe, stay protected, and um, hopefully we'll be back at SMY um, at church.